Hi, this is Jay Caruso of Mobile Pixel, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the iOS application Darkroom. Coming up. Hey, this is Jay at Mobile Pixel, helping you ignite your mobile creativity. Uh, this video, I'm going to go through uh, a photo editing application. Unfortunately, this photo editing application is not available on Android. This is available for iOS only, and it's called Darkroom. It is a um, newer uh, photo editing app. It is not one that is reliant on a ton of filters. So this is one that is kind of more direct in terms of what you want to edit rather than uh, all kinds of grunge filters and everything else that you can use to make photos look a different way. This one in particular is really just kind of like your classic editing style. So things, again, if you're a Photoshop user, if you've shot photos on DSLRs and you've used Photoshop or any other kind of desktop uh, photo editing application, it's going to be reminiscent of that. So there are filters that you can use, and I'll get into those in a moment. Uh, but there is, for the most part, this is really more of kind of like a basic photo editing application, but the tools are pretty powerful in what you can do. So what I've got here is a photo that I took, you know, this is in, in Washington, D.C. Obviously, I was kind of crossing the street, and I, you know, was looking down Constitution Avenue, and there was, uh, there was, you know, the Capitol, and if you could see now, like the Capitol, they had all that work done. So all the all the scaffolding is away and it's back and restored to some some. It really looks good. You know, they did some excellent work on it. And so I grabbed a photo from a distance away. Uh, so obviously the photo, the way this looks right now, it looks kind of junky. It looks like a typical snapshot. So if we wanted to go ahead and edit it and do that. So I brought it into Darkroom and on the first uh, set of options, there's a number of different things that you can do. Uh, you can use this uh, grid right here so you can see the degrees into which you are moving the photo. And basically, you have the option of taking that and being able to straighten things out. And so, yeah, mine was, mine was a little, because I was, again, I was crossing the street. If you look at the original composition, you know, if we reset it to where it was, you can kind of see it's a little off. Uh, so I do want to straighten that out. So I'm just going to tilt that a little bit and I hit done. And now I've got a photo that's actually a little bit straighter than it was before. Uh, once you do that, there are other options that you can go into. Now, uh, this is where it has some basic editing tools. All right, so you can uh, you can look at that. Uh, there's different things. You know, if you want to increase the brightness, you can do that as well. Uh, and as you see, when you move the slider with your finger, it'll show you where you're at. It doesn't give any kind of numbers or percentages, just the line. So if you want to bring it back to it where it really was, you just go back to where the circle is zero, uh, excuse me, the circle is white, and then you'll be where you are. So you can kind of do the same thing with the contrast if you wanted to bump that up or bring it down. Uh, same thing with the saturation. These are your basic sliders that, again, adjust the entire image of the photo. You can do the temperature as well. Uh, and then you also have, you know, your typical kind of like, you know, your fade options if you want to use that or if you want to put a vignette around the photo, you can do that as well. And if you want to increase the sharpness, Increasing the sharpness really isn't going to do you very good because these are JPEG photos. Again, if unless you're shooting in RAW, uh, really what you're doing here is you, you're, you're sharpening photos that are already sharpened, so you want to be careful with that. Darkroom also has uh, a curves adjustment tool. Now, this one, it, it was funny. It took me a little while to kind of figure it out uh, because you're not... Remember, I, I did a video, and I'll link to it in the, in the description, where I did a video on Snapseed, which is available for iOS and for Android, and also allows now you to uh, to edit um, uh, do a curves adjustment, and in that you kind of do the curves adjustment the way you would do in like in Photoshop. You would you know press on the line with your finger and kind of drag it up. Here, what they've done, you can see this. They've broken the curves adjustment down into um, five different areas. So they're saying, you know, they have the blacks, the shadows, midtones, highlights, and whites. Okay, and so what you want to do is if you're going to say, okay, I need to get the shadows a little bit darker, you're going to, instead of grabbing the line, you just basically slide down. It doesn't matter where you start. You slide up or down within that column, and it will go ahead and it will move the, cur it will move the curves line 
to where you might think it would be. You know, if your midtones are a little dark and you want to brighten those up, or if you want to darken the midtones a little bit, you kind of slide it down again. Uh, you can bring up the highlights, or you can bring them down. Uh, your whites, which are going to be like those areas, your clouds, you know, you can kind of bring those down. Same thing with the blacks. You know, if if you think that, and the blacks in this photo are actually done pretty well, so it's like it's kind of as dark as you can go there. You can move it up, but pretty much your whites and your blacks in this photo are at zero to hundred percent. And so it's saying, um, it's going to, you know, it's going to work out pretty well. You can do the same thing with the different channels that I talked about. And you can see that in the Snapseed video as well. RGB means you're going to affect the whole thing. You can go on the, <clears throat> on R and you can just adjust the reds within the photo if you want to. And you can do the same thing with the greens and blues. You know, so if you feel like you're, 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 photo has a little too much blue haze you can go into the blues and you can take that down a little bit you know if you want to increase the reds you know kind of bring that up a little bit you can do that as well there's all these different tools that you can use now the great thing about this is that let's just say you go through all these changes and you're like I really don't like any of them okay so all the way there on the right lists all of the different adjustments that you've made so you can stop all of those, and you can sit there and say, okay, you know what? I'm just going to go right back to the way it was as it was shot, and I'm going to start over. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to straighten my photo out. Uh, at this point, you can also sit there and say, you know what? I'm going to do a crop. Now, <clears throat> to me, this photo is a little bit too busy. I think the car and the head and the, uh, the stoplight there in the foreground uh, just totally distract from the photo. The photo, the, the photo in this case, is, it's a photo of the Capitol. But, you know, most people, when they're trained to look at a photo, they look from left to right, and basically all I am directed to looking at is that red traffic light in the car. Now, I want to share this. So let's just say I want to share it on Instagram. Instagram allows you to now share photos at, uh, at you don't have to do a one-to-one -one ratio. You can shoot uh, wider ones, but you're gonna, it's, gonna, it's, gonna, it's going to look, it's not going to fill the screen. So let's just say for this one, for the purpose of this, I do want to put it on Instagram, and I do want to do the one-to-one. -one. So I'll go ahead and choose that one-to-one, -one, and then I can kind of move it around. So when I do that, it's still, you know, the, the, the capital is a little bit too small. So let's bring that down. Kind of squeeze in there. And again, at this point, I am going to, going to uh, you know, the quote-unquote rules of photography. I'm going to kind of observe the, the rule of thirds and, and put the capital kind of in that third area, uh, you know, in that in that lower third area of the frame, and so once I have a composition that I kind of like, in fact, we'll just make it, we'll bring it up even a little bit more. I hit done. Now I have a much more pleasing photograph simply because of the way I cropped it. And you know, a lot of people would say, well, if you're going to be cropping, you know, you should move in closer. But sometimes you don't have that option. Sometimes you are limited. In what you can do and so a crop in order to get the composition that you want is perfectly fine you know don't listen to people who are gonna say well you really should move if you're gonna take a photo no remember don't follow the rules all the time from time to time you're gonna have to use a crop function in order to get the composition that you want and so that's what we have here all right so what I have now is a much more pleasing image of the Capitol and the clouds and even the street, which is kind of empty on the right-hand side there. So that's actually nice. There's not a lot of cars. So at this point, I can now go back and I can do some of the things that I wanted, wanted to do if I wanted to kind of increase certain areas. And I think, I think the, the image is pretty good. I do think the highlights, I want to bring those up a little bit, okay, because I really want to get some more contrast in there. And I do want to bring the shadows down a little bit, okay? I'm still looking at this, and there's still some stuff that I don't like uh, in terms of what I'm looking at here. So, like the um, so the hue, I think the hue is a little bit. I think it's off a little bit. So I'm going to adjust that, and I'm actually oops. So the colors that I want to adjust. So I'm going to look at the blue, and I'm going to take that down a little bit. All right. So there, I can like increase that, or I can decrease that based upon which one I'm going to choose and then I could choose the red hue and actually bring that up a little bit all right so these an experiment you know again you can always go back and you can 
you can revert back to what you want. Even you don't even have to go all the way back to the beginning. You could just there, sit there and say, okay, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to go back to, you know, the red curves and just kind of undo that. Uh, or, you know, there's ways that you can go ahead and you can just apply a filter if you want to. If you're, if you like the composition the way it is and you're just looking for something where you can quickly take the photo and, and get it posted online or you like the composition and you're really not, you're, you're pressed for time. A lot of times if you're out, if you want to get the thing posted, you could do that as well. You know, some of these filters are good. Uh, some of them are, some of them are not so good. I think, see, like this one here, I think is a little, it's a little overdone. It looks too blue. Uh, it's not very good. This one kind of removes detail from the sky. This one is actually, uh, this is A400. This one's actually pretty good. I like this one. Um, it still leaves that detail there. Uh, this is P110, which is another one that's kind of like it fades the photo. This one's all right as well, the P400. Uh, then there's some other, there's a bunch here. Now, please note, this, this is important to note, that the application is free for the most part, okay? If you want to unlock the features of like the curves adjustment tool and you want to add more filters, because I think basically it comes with the dark room filters with the free version. Okay. And that goes, once that goes, it goes up to M100. So you have these, like, looks like it's about, let me see, one, two, three, four, about a dozen filters built into the application. When you pay the money, there are two things that you can do. $399 will unlock either the curves adjustment or more filters. Okay. And those are, and it has the darkroom ones and it has all the different black and white filters as well. Okay. So you have the different black and white filters that you can apply to the photo. Uh, X Pro, which is a, a particular type of, of film look. Uh, and then it has filters that are made more for portraits and filters that are made for landscape. So you can pay $3.99 and get just the filters or the curves adjustment. But if you pay $5.99, you get both. So honestly, the app is lacking without the curves adjustment tool. And I think that the only the, the initial included dozen filters aren't really all that good. But when you unlock everything else, there's some real good stuff there that you can use and so I would say that it's worth the $5.99 to kind of unlock uh, those other things. I, I, I really wish these applications would just include everything. Go ahead and, and charge $5.99 for it. People like me who want to have that extra fine control uh, when, they're, when they're shooting uh, their photos and editing them aren't going to care. You know, we're not, we're not out there buying tons of different applications all the time, but we want stuff that's going to, to work out really well. And so we'll go ahead and we will pay the extra amount. So charging five and five ninety nine is not a lot for an application, especially one that's pretty powerful as this. And I think this is great, especially if you are uh, you're not going to be using it for, you know, especially if if you're just looking for something really to edit, you know, your 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 contrast and your highlights and your luminance, and you want to do S curves adjustments. It has all that, so it's a very powerful tool without all of the uh, fancy HDR, uh, you know, grunge looks and all that other kind of stuff. None of that is there. This is just your kind of base information that you're going to uh, you're going to do, and it provides uh, for a very uh, you know powerful tool. The other thing that's really great uh, is that let's just say that you develop your own look. You make some changes. You make some adjustments. You do a whole bunch of things, and you actually like it. What you can actually do is you can, you know, there's certain things you can do here, but there's other things you can use. You can actually save. I'm not sure exactly how to do it, but you can take one of the, all the adjustments that you made and export it as a filter. So you can make all these adjustments on your own and say, you know what? I know that I'm going to have a lot of images that are going to have the same kind of look. And I think the adjustments that I've made are great in order to make it into a filter. And you can do that. And, you know, that will, you know, that kind of gives you, so that way next time you have the same kind of photograph, you don't then have to go and redo those same adjustments over again. You can just apply the filter that you have then created, uh, which is pretty neat. Uh, so, you know, overall, 
it is a it is a very good app. Uh, I like it. It it may be a little bit again if you're looking for something simple, it works. Uh, but you wouldn't want to pay the five ninety nine for it. I would stick with Snapseed then if you're just looking for the free app. If you want to sit there and go the extra mile and you're really looking to have some finer control over editing your photos without all of the strong filters and all the little toys and everything like that that Snapseed comes with, then this may be the app for you. Uh, it's very robust. It uh, it's very light. It operates very fast. I'm using this on an iPhone 7 Plus. Okay. So you can actually, here's where you can kind of create your own filter. All right. So basically what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to call this J and then save it. All right. So all of the adjustments that I have made are now under the J filter. So pretty neat. And so you can always apply those changes again next time. And if you do that with black and white or anything else you can do it with, I like the fact that you could sit there and now create your own filters. That is an excellent part of this app because you cannot do that in something like Snapseed. Uh, so that gives this kind of a leg up, especially if you're somebody that shoots the same types of photos uh, different times. And a lot of people have their specialties, even when they're shooting on mobile. So you may be shooting landscapes, or you may be shooting portraits. Believe it or not, the iPhone 7 Plus has the uh, portrait mode, uh, which is pretty wild. And 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 I'm going to get into that uh, in a separate video, show you how that works, which I think is really neat. And, you know, so you may shoot different ways. You may shoot different things. You may shoot at different times. And you may need a filter that is going to be a starting point, at least, for that. Because remember, you can always apply a filter and then make additional changes. But if you say, I want to get to this starting point here that's going to work for me. So um, I recommend this app. Um, again, unfortunately, it's not available for anybody but iOS users. Uh, I don't know if they're, if they're planning to do it for Android or the Windows phone. I'm not sure. Uh, but for iOS users, it's out there. Uh, it works very well. It's got an easy learning curve. And, you know, it has all the features like being able to save your own filter. Uh, you can save it to your library. You can trash whatever you're doing. Uh, you also have the option to uh, share it to different uh, social media outlets, or you can save it. You can share it to Twitter, Instagram, uh, save as a copy, which is always good, so you're not going to actually go over your original image, which you don't really want to do, okay? And you can also do it, save as where you save it as a square photo. So it's really cool, all these little features that it has. And again, I think, in 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 my view, it is worth it if you are somebody that wants to have the real fine control over the images in your editing, pay the $5.99, get the additional filters, get the get the S curves adjustment. Uh, you won't go wrong with that. All right. Uh, so hey, if you if you like this video, please go ahead, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions, please please uh, feel free uh, to leave those questions down below. If you have any comments or anything like that, and if you have any criticisms, if if there's something I didn't go over, or something I didn't explain very well. Please let me know because I'm going to need that for future videos when I do it. Uh, so uh, the app, again, is Darkroom. It's available for iOS. Free app, $5.99 to get everything unlocked. Well worth it. And uh, thank you for everything. And go ahead, like I said, if you if you like uh, what you see here, go to mobilepixel.co slash sign up. And, you know, you'll get an email whenever these um, whenever these posts go live. I only do about one a day, so you're not going to get spammed or anything like that. So we'll see you next time here on Mobile Pixel, helping you ignite your mobile creativity. See ya.